Hi everybody, it's Lene. Thanks for stopping by my channel today. I have a brand new paper bag project for you. This little paper bag journal is made from two paper bags and a sweet little paper pack. And it is really fun and easy to put together, you guys. This is great for experienced paper crafters or beginners. Inside there is a pocket. And then we've got all of our little pages right in there. I used a pamphlet stitch to put this together so it made it really easy. And if you stick around to the end of this video, I'll tell you how you can win this for your very own or to share with a friend. So let's make a paper bag journal together. All right, let's get started. Full disclosure, this is not an original project. I've seen this type of paper bag journal multiple times on YouTube, and but what inspired me was watching uh, a TikTok video by the creator of My Vintage Journal, and I really liked how she put hers together, although I am changing a few things and I've changed the closure especially. So let's take a look at what I am using. So I'm using 12 by 12, patterned papers. These are Country Blooms. This is one of my favorites, you guys. I've used this before. This gorgeous, gorgeous border and this wood paper is so beautiful. Oops. And um, it is double-sided. You get two of each of these signatures, but the borders on here are just amazing. And I love the colors. I love that sort of peachy salmon color and the purple and the sepia is really, really gorgeous. And we've got a whole sheet of cutouts here. And then on the back of the cutouts, it's got this fantastic plaid. Um, we're gonna use a little bit of it, but we're gonna use try to find a tag that is <laughs> maybe one that I'm not gonna use so much, and we'll try to take it from that one. So, let's get started. The paper bags I'm using, you guys, are two. This is five by 10 inches and they are gift sacks from Hobby Lobby. I use these a lot. Um, I, they're $2.99 for 12 and I bought these for $1.50. They're on sale a lot. And what I like about them is they're quite sturdy. It's, like, it's almost like a cardstock feel to it. Um, and they're very precise as far as how they're measured. Where a lot of times when you, when you use lunch sack type bags, they're very inexpensive and they certainly are wonderful and can be used with this. I'll show you an example using a lunch sack type. Um, they're just not quite as precisely measured. So that's why I prefer these. All right, so the first thing we're gonna do is, and probably the only tricky thing in this whole thing, you're gonna open up one of the bags Oh wait, for, I forgot. First we have to cut it down. All right, this first bag, we're gonna cut down to eight inches. So putting the gusseted end on this side, eight inches. All right, and then for this bag, we're just gonna go ahead. And this one, we're only using this top part of the bag, all right? So for this one, we're only using the top six inches. All right. Now we're gonna open our bag. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna flatten it out. We're gonna open it all the way. And what's very easy is to take your hand and put it in here kind of like this, okay? And then we're going to flatten, flatten, flatten it out like this. And then when you get to the gusseted part, sometimes it just takes a little finagling like that. There we go. That's it, that's the trickiest part. All right, so this piece we're gonna also open. I'm gonna do that, all right. And then using a bone folder, helpful. Just make sure that we're really getting these flat as possible. All right, 
going to be using a little Cosmic Shimmer glue. And then what you're gonna do is, is you're gonna glue one end of this cutaway bag. You're gonna put glue right in there, open that up, see that? And then we're going to just glue that shut. All right. And then this one right here, you can also glue shut, and then we're going to just stick it right inside. So find the best way to show you guys. And you don't want a lot of glue, and you notice I'm putting it about a quarter inch from the edge because I don't want it to like squish out. All right, so now they're glued shut, and now I'm just gonna take a little bit of glue. Now I am going close to the edge on this one because this is gonna go inside the opening of the other bag. So I don't care if it squishes. I prefer if it squishes. There we go. Now, you only want it to go in there about a half an inch, and the most important part here is, is you want this to be straight. There we go. And even putting this, like if you have a cutting mat or something, you could like, I'm just gonna use the, the lines here on my background, just to kind of make sure we're going in the right direction. All right, the last bit of gluing is, we're gonna glue this little part of the flap down, and then that's all. Oh, come on, glue. Make my glue opening a little bigger. There we go. All right, so now, oh, let's see, I got a little too close to the edge, so we have a little squishing. That is okay. All right, so now we're gonna take, now we're all glued down, and then you might wanna just let this sit for a few minutes until everything is dry, it doesn't take long but um, I'm gonna go ahead and push forward here. So the first thing we're gonna do is this part gets folded down like this. That's gonna be our flap, just like that. And then this part right here is gonna get folded right like that. Are we seeing the journal start taking place? There we go. Now, there you have the start of your journal. It's gonna open like this. Isn't that pretty? <laughs> All right, now this is what the same thing looks like made from the lunch sack, uh, lunch sack type bags and the same measurements and everything, but you'll see it's just a little flimsier. Um, that's okay because we're gonna be covering it with cardstock anyway and it's gonna get um, a better foundation. But um, yeah, things are just not as squared up. Sometimes you have little areas like this. If that doesn't bother you, by all means, use what you have. Use what you have. All right, so the next thing we're gonna do is cut down some paper. I'll grab my paper back. And I start off with the flap because that is the trickiest bit to cover. And I'm gonna show you what I did because I wanted this beautiful border sort of centered right there. I thought that would be just gorgeous on that flap. So this is what I'm gonna do. I'm going to have this, see how it's not quite to the edge? I've kind of pushed it down a little bit. All right, so I want this to extend off the edge a little bit. So here's my fold. And we're gonna start tracing right there. There we go. And then we're just gonna cut this out. And then once we have it cut out, there is still a little bit of finessing that to get it 
to fit because I want a little bit of a border all the way around. If you don't want to have a border, it's easy to just cover that flap with glue and then place this on there and glue that down. All right, so that's gonna go right there. And as you can see, my ends here need to be trimmed down. And how I like to do that is just kind of fold that over, but don't crease it. Okay, that way everything is even. Yeah, I'm happy with that. Okay, so you would do this for the front and then you could do the same one with the second signature doing the inside or you could make the inside one different, however you want to handle that. All right, now I just have to find the rest of my paper. It's buried here. Here we go. All right, so I took the other part of that signature. This is like where the end of that paper was, where all the pretty white etching flowers were. And we can just glue that there, and I need to cut that down a little bit, okay? And then I cut some other pieces right here to go on the inside. So I'm gonna cut some paper down, I'll be right back. All right, we are back with all of our pieces cut down. So um, I don't wanna give you measurements as usual because your paper bags are gonna be different than my paper bags. So let me show you how I do this. So for the front cover, um, pretty much you're gonna do it the same way as the inside, but what you're gonna do is take your paper and place it where you want it. And I'm leaving a border around the edge right there and right there and then i'm taking my pencil and i'm just marking it here and then i want to make sure i get that out of the way of the flap and i want to mark it there all right so i have those marks done and then i'm going to go ahead there and then I cut there and I do that on the front of the back now the front has different measurements than the inside so because I wanted the insides to be a little bit smaller and that's how you do it now I like to still ink my edges okay it just kind of coordinates with that paper bag look and we've got just a brown ink fryer brown is my favorite a little applicator all right so i also took a little bit of another paper here that i'm going to grab you to make a little pocket so i cut out some paper here to make a little pocket which i'm going to take and glue at the bottom of the inside pages. So I'm gonna go ahead first and do the outside and cover that. So we've already cut that down. So as I mentioned, you need two for the flap, one for the outside, one for the inside. this side just checking my measurements there Make, oops making sure we get glue around the outside edges it's the most important part I don't like to get right up next to the edge because then as I said before the glue kind of seeps out and because this is liquid glue it's just gonna spread on its own all right back there we go 
And then this, I should mention, this is the little seam where we glued the paper bags together. That's just gonna get covered. I'm gonna move this over a little bit. One of the reasons I like liquid glue, <laughs> if you mess up, you've got a little bit of time to move it around. All right, so front is covered. Inside, I changed it up and used this border for the inside. So I'm gonna go ahead on this one, I'm gonna glue my pocket down, but I'm only gonna put glue on three sides. You wanna leave that border along the top edge because it's so pretty. We're gluing that there. And then this one's gonna go here, once again, covering that seam where we glued the two paper bags together. Oh, I got glue in my fingers. And then this one is going to go right here. And then I'm gonna talk as we do this. Now, the papers that I'm using to put on the inside, you could just use regular printer paper, eight and a half by 11 paper, you want to keep it thin. I like to use eight and a half by 11 printer weight um, craft paper. And let me dig that out too. I just have papers everywhere, you guys. So this is what I like to use. I buy this on Amazon. I'm in a great big batch like this. This is eight and a half by 11. But our folder, our journal cover, is a little bit smaller than that. So this is still 11 inches long, but I needed to cut this down to, instead of eight and a half inches wide, this is seven and a half inches wide. And I probably have about 10 sheets in here, so that gives me 20 pages. Folded it in half, I'm gonna score that. And then we're gonna do a little pamphlet stitch, which is just the easiest stitch. It's the only stitch I use on this channel. We don't have to make it complicated. And this is gonna go right in there. and then we're gonna do a closure, okay? So when I come back, we're going to stitch these papers in, and then we're gonna do the closure. All right, we're back. So the tools I'm using, I purchased on Amazon, and it comes with, let me grab them all, I kind of have them spread out. It came with two bone folders, which is nice to have, um, an awl, and that's A-W-L, and some waxed thread, and then a whole collection of needles in different sizes, but they all have very large eyes on them for threading the wax thread. Now, if you're new to journal making or book binding, you don't need to purchase all of this. Um, you could use, instead of at all, you could use um, a really uh, sharp thumbtack, okay, the kind that has a little thing that you hold on to it. Thumbtack works great for this. Um, you could use embroidery floss for this as well. And, you know, you can always use a butter knife for this. So you don't need to go out and purchase all new things when you're first trying something out. That is for sure. Use what you have. All right, so we're just making sure. I've gone ahead and I've put the paper that's already folded and cut down and everything. And that's right there, and we want it centered. And then I like to just use large paper clips to clip things down. Whenever I try to get away with not putting the paper clips down, I always regret it. So we're going to put a hole. We're gonna use this awl to punch a hole at the center, and then about an inch from each end. And some people like to measure and everything. I don't. Um, whatever you feel comfortable doing. So we're gonna push it through here. We want it to go through 
right there. Okay. And then about an inch from each end. There we go. And over here. There we go. All right, so for measuring your wax thread, how much you're gonna need, because you're gonna need to cut it from this roll. You're gonna go, this, that's the general rule of thumb. You do this twice. And then if you're insecure like me, you just do like a little bit more. <laughs> and um, that way you've, you're, oh, I've never not had enough. And then I've already threaded this. There's not gonna be a knot in the end, okay? And then we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna start from the inside. Right there. And then you want about two inches left on the inside, right there. And then you can go to either end next. So I can see I need to glue that down a little better. All right, there we go. And then we're gonna come all the way over here. We're gonna go up this way tighten everything up there. And then we're gonna go back through, through the center again. So the little tails are in the inside part here. Just make sure everything is tight. See if you can see, that's how it's gonna look on the out, ooh, there we go, <laughs> on the outside. All right, then another thing I like to do is we have the center piece right here. I like to take one of those tails and put it on one side and keep the other one on the other side. And then we're gonna knot them around that center piece, that center string there. See, that's how much extra I didn't need. There, we're gonna knot that once one direction and then you're gonna knot it the other direction. And then I like to leave these just about a half inch long, just like that. And then we can remove those. All right. And then this particular type of journal could definitely handle more pages. You could probably put five or six more pages in there. Let's get this glued down properly. There we go. But I didn't put so many in and here that here's why. Um, just giving you a, a sneak peek on this, you guys. I love to give away my projects, I love it. I don't want to keep them around my home. So I love to share them with my viewers. So if you're new to my channel, um, I'll be giving you more information at the end, but I love to, to pick a winner those people who like, comment, and subscribe will be entered into a little contest to win this very journal. So I, had, I do have to mail it so I didn't put a ton of pages in. All right, we're back to do the closure. So we're gonna need the little awl again. Also, I have a sweet little vintage button that's about three quarters of an inch wide, nice little ivory button. I like to just use two holes because we're going to be th doing some thread through that and I don't want to do four holes. <laughs> so what you're going to do is place this. You want the holes to be able to fit the all the thumbtack, whatever you're using. And then you're going to place it where you want to have that on your closure there. And you see we're going to be just poking some holes right through here. And it occurred to me when I was lining the inside of this flap that I should have left this off and done this closure attachment first and then glued this on at the end. But you guys can learn from my mistake. It's not gonna hurt anything if you have um, a stitch throwing showing through the other side, but that would have been probably a better thing to do. All right, so I've got two holes right there. I'm going to use that same wax thread 
my needle. The other important thing to make sure is, is that your needle is going to fit through your holes on your button. That would be sad to learn as you were getting set up. And then we're going to go through here. Oh, the other thing is, I just wanna make sure I have enough because this is what we're doing. We're gonna attach the button with the wax thread and then we're gonna use the wax thread as a closure. So I wanna make sure I have enough, I wrap that around. Well, that's out of the way. All right, so let's secure this. We're gonna start off from the inside. Just like that. I love this button. I had this in my button box. I only have one of them. I like to imagine it came off of some beautiful coat from the 50s, something really, really fabulous. All right, and we're gonna put that through again. There we go. And whoops, I just wanna make sure that that's nice and tight. And then we're gonna go through one more time, but this time we're gonna be fakers. We're not gonna go through the buttonhole. We're just going through the paper part. So you're gonna turn it and you're gonna go up that way. See, it's kinda of going out the side. All right. Now this is really nice and secure there, so we can go ahead and just clip that. It's not gonna go anywhere, it's nice and waxy. And then we can just take this away. All right, so our closure is just gonna work like this. And we just wrap it around, just like that squish it together and that's just a really simple closure and I love the look of that button all right so a couple more things inside I covered a tag with some pretty paper that's gonna go right there in that pocket and then I used one of the little cutouts from the paper pack and I'm gonna glue that down and while I do that I so want to remind you guys, if you'd like a chance to win this for your very own or to share with a friend, make sure and like, comment, and subscribe. And I would love to send this to one of you. I think I've got this writing upside down. Yeah, there we go. I would love to send this to someone, you guys. I really, truly would. I love to share these projects. So yeah, make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. And then you gotta wait, watch next week's video and see if you're the winner. That's the key. You've got to see if you're a winner, you guys. And then uh, follow the instructions and let me know. Thanks so much for joining me today. I had a lot of fun on this project. I hope you give it a try and I'll see you in the next one.